um, basically when we started this project, we wanted to come up with something that was interesting and uh, kind of new to the, the whole field of technology. And we decided that we were going to go with the, the high-speed rail system. Just a little definition of, of the high-speed rail system. And also, during our presentation, you're going to hear a lot about HSR, which is just the high-speed rail. <clears throat> Basically, it's a, it's, a <clears throat> it's a type of rail transportation that operates significantly faster than normal speed of rail traffic. Uh, specific definitions include 125 miles per hour. <clears throat> Whether the track is upgraded or new by, by European Union and above 90 miles per hour. And the, and the speed may vary depending on, on the area. Um, say in Champaign, if there's a, a, a train system here in Champaign to Springfield, uh, regulations may keep the, 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 the speed to 250 miles per hour when initially it could be 300. While high, while high speed rail is usually designed for passenger travel, some high speed systems also carry some kind of freight service. A little history on, uh, on the rail systems itself. Rail, railways were the first form of land mass transportation into the development of the motor car in the early 20th century. A little more history. Rail, railway companies in Europe and in the United States use the streamlined trains. Um, basically, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, for uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, basically, it, they, they use the streamlines for, for speed. And the rationale behind the, the whole system is the introduction of a high speed rail system was a need for addition additional capacity to meet increasing demand for passionate rail travel around the world and locally. And like I've mentioned, uh, maybe from Chicago to, to Champaign, Champaign, Champaign to Springfield. And I turn it over to Eric. Yes, and now I'm going to tell you about the advantages of those high-speed high railroads. Uh, to start over, we're going to uh, is uh, one of the first uh, implementations of HSR, which probably was the Tokaido main line of Shinkansen, which connected Osaka and Tokyo in Japan. And two main factors why it happened, why they decided to come up with a high-speed railroad is because Japan is a country with a high urban density, and they uh, have a large mass transit demands. So, and for the same reasons, um, they implemented high-speed railroads in Europe too. Um, they started with France, Germany, and then Italy. So. Uh, since now we live in a days where um, of the growing urbanized area, there is a demand for the transit system that is going to be a reliable and safe, energy efficient. Uh, we're going to be less dependent on fossil fuels and have high throughput. And essentially going to be environmentally friendly. HSR wouldn't be like a, just another alternative way of transportation, but it would be rather a supplement to existing transport system. Uh, the reason why it's HSR is because it has succeeded in the other countries, and it's safe, um, energy efficient, um, quick, and reliable. Um, first thing is to determine energy efficiency. It's uh, <clears throat> energy efficiency is very much depend on the type of vehicle we're using and on uh, also based on the circumstances. Uh, it usually measured in watt hour <coughs> per passenger mile, and basically plane has high 
efficiency on long distances just because it takes a lot of uh, energy to take off and to land. Uh, car, on the other hand, consumes less amount of energy, but it has a limited capacity. Like, well, bike is very efficient for short distances. And since trains are usually, can board a lot of people, it is reasonable to set up the station in the highly urbanized areas or such a places as airports where a lot of people need to transit from point A to point B. And uh, within 500 miles radius, uh, it would be, a uh, high-speed railroad would be uh, very efficient because our speed is gonna be close to to the speed of plane and still it's gonna consume less power and um, it's still gonna have larger capacity and it most definitely will beat any car on a highway uh, another thing um, about high-speed railroad is its safety uh, it's because uh, the course of like the moving direction of the train is pretty much predictable and uh, it have a solid track of safety history for example Tokaido Shinkansen had no any derailment or collision since it was opened back in 1964. Same thing with Amtrak Metro Line, or the one that connects uh, New York and Washington. Uh, they had no accidents since its establishment. Uh, other thing is convenience. Uh, Perhaps in the airports, it's very convenient to deploy high-speed railroad system just because it would, uh, as I told before, airport is a place where a lot of people are need to get from point A to point B, and they usually don't have cars because they just, like, get off the board. Um, the Amsterdam airport, Schiphol, has, like, implemented the high-speed railroad system, and, like, it can deliver you to the downtown Amsterdam in 15, 20 minutes, and it's gonna cost you like about 10 times cheaper as a cab, and it will do it faster as well. Uh, another thing is in Moscow, um, it also, they just recently come up with a high-speed rail system, which is kinda deliver you to the downtown in 35 minutes as well. It's very comfortable train uh, with Wi-Fi in, Wi internet available, and the ticket only costs you about $4. Uh, there are also economical and environmental benefits, because uh, HSR can run on different sources of energy, uh, including nuclear. Uh, so it won't depend so much on fossil fuel. Uh, second is um, when they building a power station along this um, to support the rail the railroad system, they gonna be they can be way more controllable than um, a bunch of cars are driving around. So. Uh, environmental control would be uh, more efficient and they also produce less carbon dioxide and they require much less space than existing uh, transport be because like uh, throughput of railroad would be way bigger than four lines of highway. Okay, I'll go through this really, really quickly, and we did have a video we were going to show, but we're going to skip it in the interest of time, so I'm just going to bore you with telling you what was in the video. But to start with, high-speed rail, as Eric said, is great in highly dense urban areas. 
California did a study to connect San Francisco to Los Angeles, estimated the cost to build it at $33 billion. But given the volume of people that travel that route, maybe it's worthwhile. Uh, nationally, the estimate is $500 billion. Okay. And currently, the Obama administration has allotted only $13 million, or $13 billion. And this is mostly to increase the speed of existing Amtrak trains rather than to build an entirely new high-speed rail system nationally. Uh, the proposed route between, in Illinois, one of them is between St. Louis and Chicago. And uh, this is where we're going to show the video, but we won't. So I'll tell you kind of what was in it. Um, in Illinois, the top speeds would increase from 79 miles per hour to 110 miles an hour. So it would save a little bit of time in that regard. However, the costs just to build it are estimated at $280 for every resident of the state in new taxes. Man, woman, child, everyone. $280 for every man, woman, and child in the state just to build it. Tens of millions more would be required to subsidize the new lines to make it affordable to actually use. Okay. That was the video. Um, more on the subsidies, you think of subsidies as helping people who maybe don't have their own means of paying, but only 13% of Amtrak riders earn less than 20000 And the average Amtrak rider has a higher income than the average U.S. taxpayer. Many people who ride the trains commute to town, takes them into the downtown areas, metro, things like that, local railroads, a little different, but Amtrak is primarily to get you downtown. So something interesting on the subsidies, average subsidy of $100 per passenger overall and a round trip ticket from New York to Los Angeles receives over $1,000 in federal subsidies, plus the price that somebody pays for the ticket. Now, a quick look on Expedia or anywhere else will show you you can get a round trip ticket for under $300 without any federal subsidies. So high speed rail in high dense, highly dense areas is good. In Illinois, maybe not. It's expensive. Due to low ridership, it's very inefficient unless the train is completely full. And it, places like Illinois, it's not going to reduce traffic very much. And unless you live close to the rail station, you're kind of out of luck as to get onto it. Oh. All right, I was, before I, we continue, I uh, was kind of messing around with my PowerPoints. So that's why there are sound effects to it. I didn't mean to leave it on there. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing because, okay. But, um. All right, so my uh, presentation is uh, continuing on from what everyone else. I'm doing the present status and future of prognosticate, prognostication of high-speed trains. And this first map here is a map of the high-speed rail system in Europe uh, currently. And you can see how extensive it is in Europe right now. The next slide is of, this is much, this isn't a very good slide at all, but this is the East Asia, um, Japan, China, uh, Korea, they all have high speed trains going. And these are some of the networks, rails uh, in China. There are 6,003 kilometers of network. Japan has currently 200 and 2,459. The fastest rails are in 1964 in Japan were at speeds at 210 kilometers per hour or 131 miles per hour. And this is kind of a, an equivalency chart to give you a better perspective of uh, miles per hour to kilometers per hour down here at the bottom. And this is the, uh, f the Japan's fastest train, the 500 series Shinkansen. That's how you say it, operated by West Japan Railroad Company, capable of 320 kilometers per hour, 200 miles per hour. It has operated at a maximum of 190 miles per hour. Its record speed time was 277 miles per hour. The world's fastest train was France's V150, and that was at Champagne Arden Station. Set the world. They set the world record Tuesday, April third, two thousand seven, at two hundred and fifty-seven miles per hour. So.
So to put that into a little better perspective so everyone can understand, if we were going uh, from Champaign to Chicago using this simple formula here, it's uh, 56 miles per hour, give or take, um, going about 141 miles, so it would take about 2.5 hours to get to Chicago. But if we're in a high-speed train going in that fastest train that France has currently, which drives 257 miles per hour, and at going to Chicago at 141 miles an hour, it would take about 20 to 25 minutes to get from Champaign to Chicago, which is pretty fast. So February 1st, 1993, the fastest train recorded in the United States was Amtrak's X2000. Completed demonstration run between Washington, D.C. and New York with a whopping top speed of 156 miles per hour. <laughs> uh, diligent efforts to produce high-speed trains um, connecting many of the major cities uh, here in the United States. February 2009, Congress and President committed to funding for the development of high-speed rail. And the, this is uh, future uh, United States high-speed rail development ideas. Um, the red, it's kind of hard to see here, but the red are the designated high-speed rails, and then the gray is what's already current. So if you can kind of remember back to the European rail system and you know the East Asia and European or the East Asian system, how much more louder their rails are in comparison to what we, we don't even have any high speed high speed rails yet, but soon we'll have a few, but it's nothing in comparison. So just our references. system. Just a little definition of, of the high-speed rail system and also during our presentation you're going to hear a lot about HSR which is just the high-speed rail. <clears throat> Basically it's a, it's, a <clears throat> it's a type of rail transportation that operates significantly faster than normal speed of rail traffic. Uh, specific definitions include 125 miles use of streamlined trains um, basically uh, I'm sorry uh, basically for uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for uh, basically uh, they, they use the streamlines for, for speed and the rationale behind the, the whole system is the introduction of a high-speed rail system was a need for addition additional capacity to meet increasing demand for passion rail travel around the world Um, basically, when we started this project, we wanted to come up with something that was interesting and uh, kind of new to the, the whole field of technology. And we decided that we were going to go with uh, the high-speed rail design for passenger travel. Some high-speed systems also carry some kind of freight service. A little history on, uh, on the rail systems itself. Rail, railways were the first form of land mass transportation into the development of the motor car in the early 20th century. A little more history. Rail railway companies in Europe and in the United States. <clears throat> Whether the track is upgraded or new by, by European Union and above 90 miles per hour. And the, and the speed may vary depending on, on the area. Um, say in Champaign, if there's a, a, a train system here in Champaign to Springfield uh, regulations may keep the, 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 the speed to 250 miles per hour when initially it could be 300. While high, while high speed rail is usually